Hey, my name is Aaron Maloney. I'm the creative director here at Reach Church, and this is a brand new episode of What is Nothing But Jesus? This is a question we've been asking different congregates from our church, and today I am sitting here with Jacob Crossland, one of my oldest friends, and I'm absolutely stoked to be here and talk with you today. How you doing, Jacob? Hey, I'm doing great. It's great to be here tonight. Absolutely. Well, thanks, man, uh, for doing this. Uh, I'm going to start with the first question, which is, what does nothing but Jesus mean to you? And then we will turn to the second part of the question, which is, where have you seen this applied in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So nothing but Jesus means to me um, pretty much just, you know, it doesn't matter what your life circumstances are. It doesn't matter um, what your past brings, kind of, you know, where your background's at. Like, uh, there's always freedom and forgiveness um, in, in Jesus. That's awesome. Yeah, you always know that you have a fresh start and uh, you always know that there's renewal, you know? So Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, I would like to hear a story uh, from how you have seen this applied to your life. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I've, I've grown up going to church um, basically my whole life um, and just have always kind of considered myself to like be one of those like, like, you know, the Sunday school church kids that just always had the answers for everything. Um, and like, uh, I would always just, uh, you know, be in my script, you know, my Bible and everything and, and, um, would memorizing the verses and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, um, yeah, it's just for a, a good portion of my life. Um, I would take like the, the scripture and what I would understand of it, um, and make it out to be like, you know, what do I need to do to like make sure that like I'm right before God. Um, and so, um, just, just through carrying that belief, um, with me through my adolescent and and my adult years, um, I would definitely, um, you know, feel the weight of my, like my sin and my shortcomings of of what I viewed the standard of of what God had for me. Um, and and I, I just really struggled with that because for, I would say the vast majority of my life, um, I've just always struggled with like, you know, like a, a porn addiction. And I know that's something that like a lot of people, they'll like roll their eyes at cause it's just like, okay, well like, you know, you're not going out and you're not you know, doing drugs or you're not, excuse me. Um, an addiction is an addiction and that can be one that really tears people apart, you know, oh, absolutely. changes you as a person. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, um, really struggled with that and, and carrying the, the weight of the shame that kind of came with that of just like, um, you know, th- there would be multiple times, multiple seasons in my life where I would just heavily be like, all right, like I'm going to beat this this time. Like I- I'm going to get past this. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, stress it. I'm not going to let this control my life anymore. Um, and it got to a point where I was just, I was condemning myself over it because no matter how much I tried, like I just, I couldn't do it on my own, own strength. Um, and it, it led to the, the self condemnation that came from that led to, um, me condemning myself in other areas as well, whether it be with immediate family, um, whether it be with you know, my, my wife, um, you know, friends, even, even the church, um, I found it very hard to, to show up on Sunday mornings and, and honestly just be here. You almost feel like you're living a double life and then you're like, well, I don't want to be, I, I, you feel guilty being there, but, uh, it takes a toll on you. It's like, which one is the real me? You know, is, is it the one that wants to accept the gospel in its, its entirety and just be like, yeah, it's, it's, nothing you know nothing that i can do but then it's also like throughout the week and it's like okay well what do i need to do to like you know Mm -hmm. earn god's favor essentially um and so um yeah i i this past summer um of, of 2023 i just got to a real low point in my life where i just turned away from god completely and and just wanted nothing to do with him Um, because like the, the way that I viewed it was, well, if it really is about the saving power of, you know, Jesus and the cross, 
then me believing in it, if it's really about the saving power of the cross and nothing by my own efforts, then why hasn't Jesus taken that from me? You know, why, why hasn't he given me victory and deliverance over this um, just sin struggle that I've had? Um, and yeah, I just, I became very angry with God. I became very angry with the church. Um, and I, I just didn't want to be here anymore. Um, so through that, um, kind of in, in the fall last year, I, ended up hitting a point where um, I, I was ready to just completely get rid of um, my family, both my, my, you know, my parents and, and siblings and all that, but also my, you know, marriage family. And, and um, I remember that I, I was there talking to my wife about it. And like, I, I remember telling her like, I, she asked me why I was doing it. And, and I told her, I, I, I'm not going to be around much longer. Like, I, I know that like whatever depression or whatever is going on in my head, um, that I'm just not going to be here much longer and it's going to take me out eventually. Um, and I really didn't want to do it, but my wife ended up encouraging me to pray. And even in my refusing to acknowledge God in, in those moments and wanting to hand my situation over to him, um, I... Yeah, I, I, I just didn't want to do it. And and she was praying over me. And, and you know, scripture tells us that, like, the the prayer of a righteous man doesn't go unanswered. Um, And, and I firmly believe that that's what happened with, with my wife, just fervently staying there and, and not giving up and, and praying. And um, Christ ended up just showing me a lot about myself. Um, he was showing me trauma from my past, mm -hmm. um, from my childhood, from even, even adulthood, like things even semi recently, like just showing me like, Hey, like here's all your broken pieces. Mm -hmm. And, um, there were some things that, that he has revealed explicitly to me. And then there's other things that, um, he's shown me the brokenness, but not exactly the reasons behind it. Um, and so, yeah, just ever since he, he's entered my life, um, he, I, I've definitely, or I, I don't want to say entered my life. He's re-entered my life. Um, I, I felt that deliverance from my addictions. Um, I felt the deliverance from the self-condemnation. And I think that that's way more freeing than like any substance abuse or anything mm -hmm. like that. Because like what I didn't realize was I, I was being the God of my own life. So even though I know that the gospel tells me like, yeah, like nothing but Jesus, like it's, it's only by Jesus that I can be saved. Um, through my self-condemnation i was putting my place myself in the place of him mm. um and, and like i'm so grateful so in all that like he's stepped into my life and um really just turned it all around for the the better yeah that's cool man um they say the opposite of addiction is connection and when we have addictions, that's why like AA and stuff works for so many people, right? Because they have that, not only do they work through those steps, but they have that connection. And I think for you, 
Um, you know, you said it, you faced a lot of the trauma from the past and everything. And especially with, you know, a pornography addiction, a lot of times it comes from wanting to feel desired and it like hacks that same neurological pathway in our brain that like gives us that little dopamine hit and then it's hit after hit after hit and then before you know it it's been years and it's in life it's your baseline right right um so but when when i, I say all of that because through having not only this new connection with christ but the connections that come with that from the church your team, the people that love you, rather than feeling completely alone, you even said it, you wanted to cut off your family. You want, you didn't feel you were worthy of any love from anyone. And so, but, but changing that mindset and realizing like, oh, Christ loves me. And that also is a representation to others of how they can love me and how I can love others. That's when you really can start to accept that and then shine that to the, you know, be Jesus to the people around you um, and not and also not have to feel that heaviness of feeling like you're showing up living like an unbalanced life, you know, right. like balancing the weight of the the weight of the sin. Like we physically feel that right when you're doing it for a long time, you feel that weight on your chest and uh, that weight feels like it's been lifted. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember. Um, the Sunday after, you know, this whole Jesus encounter happened, um, I remember showing up to church and there, there was just so many people who, um, they were just so supportive mm. and, and they would just look at me and a lot of them, there's a handful that would say it to me. Um, but a lot of them, they would lean into my wife and just be like, Jake looks different, but like in a good way, like, like, like for the first time, like he looks like he's like, there's yeah. just this light, this, this, um, the weight off your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Man. Um, yeah. And, and like, I, I'm so beyond grateful for this church, um, for the love that everybody just has for each other, the, the desire to like, this church we see somebody who's hurting we see somebody who's broken and like i know tyler says this like every week but it's just like yeah like like get over here like mm -hmm. come in like like we're not trying to like pretend like we're better than you pretend like we, we we're these perfect people that you know somehow like god's just like pulled apart and been like oh yeah like you're perfect now like no, it's we're the, we're, we are the worst of these right? And, right and we all have different struggles and um i love the the phrase it's really easy to judge someone on a sin you yourself would not commit so like if there's a certain sin i don't struggle with that might be one i'm more inclined to judge somebody else on um and but i feel like here um you know when god says or jesus says that he is without sin, cast the first stone. Um, we all know that we have our own struggles and we're here instead of to cast stones, to hold hands and hold each other up and uh, build each other up in that. So Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Jake, it's been absolutely great having you here today. Thank you for telling us your story. Yeah, no problem. Great to be here again. Um, yeah, and you know, glad to be here again on Sunday mornings and just looking forward to seeing everybody then. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are Reach Church. We meet here in Bear, Delaware every Sunday morning, and you can see us at 10 a.m. both online or in person. I'll see you for the next one.